Let's move on to federal politics now. I'm joined at the desk by Labor MP Ed Husick. Good to see you, Ed. Bruce, how are you? Not too bad. We haven't caught up on air for a long while. I know. Maybe since uh, you got shoved aside ingloriously to make way for the brilliant Christina Keneally. How's life out of the front line as a backbencher? Oh, I like the soft start. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I think, uh, and a lot of our viewers would agree, that you've been a good performer for Labor and uh, that Christina Keneally has not added much value. Oh, and yeah. it's been disappointing to see. No, I, I, uh, well, I think actually Christina's brought a sharp focus for us in the Home, uh, home Affairs portfolio. Uh, and I've had an opportunity, I mean, obviously you always want to serve in much more senior roles, uh, but it's um, uh, certainly given me the chance to either speak on national or, or on issues close close to home in my uh, part of Western Sydney and I'll keep doing that and you know from time to time talking with Chris Kenny. Your sister works for Albo, uh, can't she put a good word in for you? <laughs> That's right, yeah well she's uh, hard to get to, she's a power broker now so <laughs> you know it makes the family get togethers a lot more interesting. Very good. Especially the seating arrangements. <laughs> she's in charge now is she? Totally. All in all the shots. Yeah, Ed's uh, sister, Sabina Husick, uh, looks after media and communications for Anthony Albanese, a political advisor. Uh, she used to work for Christina Keneally, so yeah. You've, yeah, yeah, you're going to have some great family discussions. Look, where is Labor going on the climate debate? Um, this is a complex issue. I, you know, I, I love getting involved in the debate, but I'm a little confused because Labor just a few weeks ago voted in favour of a climate emergency in federal parliament in mm -hmm. Canberra. And now Anthony Albanese is out there spruiking the coal industry. It's, it seems a little bit, uh, seems a bit of like a paradox. I, I think you've got to be able to. I made this point the other day uh, with your um, uh, terrific colleague Tom Connell. You know, even with uh, the policies we took to the federal election, where in particular we indicated we would support and want to encourage 50% of energy generation through renewable sources by 2030. Um, uh, we uh, still saw in that, even if you're generating by 50% through renewables, there's still another 50% that has to uh, be uh, generated and coal's got to play a, ro a role in that uh, for the foreseeable future. But the, the emphasis is on trying to find cleaner, more efficient ways of generation. Uh, and that's what you know, we support. So I suppose you had trouble in the election with Adani, though, and that wasn't for domestic consumption, that was to be exported. And, and why wouldn't Australia well, export to good quality coal when India will get that coal from somewhere else if we don't supply it? Which is the point that Anthony Albanese has been making, and I agree. I think everyone's had a chance to reflect post-election that uh, on these things you can't be all things to all people. Uh, sure, it's great in politics if you can be, but it's rare that you can either get away with it or that you get regarded for it or that you get supported for it. And, uh, you know, clearly Anthony's been trying to, you know, steer that, that uh, balanced course uh, around taking strong action on climate change while recognising, particularly in terms of um, coal that'll be used in steelmaking processes, has got a role to play. Uh, the same wind turbines that'll be generating renewable energy uh, will also have to be uh, made, uh, produced, and coal's got a role to play in that. Now, tell me, on this issue today, I've been pretty critical, particularly of your colleague, Mark Dreyfus, uh, taking this, this uh, carb, uh, climate change uh, performance index, which is, you know, it's just put out by climate activist uh, think tanks in Europe, but it might as well be put out by the Australia Institute. Uh, it puts Australia's performance last. Now, uh, no one's expecting Australia to be, to be number one, but it's so obviously political. Australia, which is reducing emissions and is committed to its Paris reduction targets, is placed last. America, uh, sorry, no, I've got there. Uh, America is placed last. Uh, it's reducing emissions. Sure, it's abandoned Paris, but it's reducing emissions even while its economy and its population grows. Australia, just above America, even though we're committed to Paris and we're re reducing emissions, um, they don't like our politics. Uh, and they place uh, China way above Australia, where they're massively expanding their emissions every year and will do so for the foreseeable future. So the, 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 the rankings are obviously absurd. Why would Labor point to a ranking like that, a survey like that, give it credibility and use it to bash Australia, bash our country? Uh, no matter how many uh, surveys come out or rankings come out that say that Australia could and should do more and is ranked relatively poorly uh, you know, to other uh, nations, I'm sure there'll be people that will dismiss it straight away, say it's just, you know, I've got a different view uh, to yourself in terms of, you know, you characterise it as not liking the politics. I think 
the, there are a lot of people in the international com community that don't like the inaction out of this government, particularly the coalition, uh, when it comes to reducing emissions. But, but emissions we are reducing are emissions, and America's very reducing emissions. a very long intro to your yeah, yeah. question. Let me respond, yes, but, if I may. But please address but, the fact that, we, that well, these are countries reducing I didn't even get a emissions. chance before you jumped in. Let me have a chance. <laughs> on emissions... Sorry to interrupt but, while you're interrupting. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, I think that works best on this show. <laughs> um, uh, but on emissions reduction, you know, there's been a large part played by the drought and the impact on economic... Uh, activity. What's the coalition done to reduce... No, they can't point to anything actively that they've done to reduce emissions. And I find the biggest irony is that they spend ages, years, fighting us on emission reduction initiatives when we were in government. We saw emissions fall. It created credits. In the absence of anything by them, they then want to use our credits and use that accounting um, uh, 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 basically trick um, to... Uh, help meet its international obligations. You know, you can't have your cake and eat it too in this yeah, yeah, case. Can I cut to the chase here? Sure, sure Labor's going to say you'll do it better. I mean, they, 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 we're reducing emissions largely through the renewable e energy target, which has been bipartisan, but Labor's the one who really increased that, sure. You can say you're going to do better and all that, but why would we bag Australia we're using a survey like this? I mean, Australia, by any rational assessment, Australia doing, is doing a lot more on climate than most other countries, oh, and certainly doing better than China and India and Indonesia, yet we have uh, Labor politicians bagging Australia. Look, uh, no, don't, I would not turn it, and don't turn it that way. We have greater ambition. We know that Australia is capable, using smart people in this country, using a commitment by across... There are a number of areas in terms of business and, and elsewhere that want to get this job done and are expecting some sense on this. Uh, we have greater ambition and, our, our, and greater faith in our ability to reduce emissions than the coalition that seems to be stuck uh, in an ideological rut and not really tackling this. And again, I come to the point, you mentioned RET. RET's been around for ages. What other than RET are they going to do to reduce emissions? They pulled apart the whole architecture that we put in place. I actually accept that in part um, we were responsible for the weakening in that uh, b simply because we took, we said some, one thing before the 2013 election that didn't come to pass post it. We paid a price for that. The reality is, though, when you looked at the performance on emissions reduction during that 2010-13 period, it was substantive. And these guys in the coalition can't... They, they simply have nothing to be able to take a concrete or demonstrate concrete, tangible reduction in emissions. And having a drought and having reduced economic activity because of that and seeing emissions reduce as a result... That is not an excuse. That is not a a, a serious uh, point of the policy. Ed, uh, we are out of time. Have a good Christmas New you Year too. break, and let's all hope 2020 gets you back on the front all, bench. All, all the best to you and all the, the close to you uh, for Christmas in 2020. Thanks.